What up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here. Uh, and I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you, making a video that I really didn't want to make, don't want to make. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, in regards to the allegations against Mr. Beast and dog pack 404 has just released a second video called i work for mr beast he's a sociopath and you guys have been blowing up my comments for the last three hours messaging me in the dm saying hot sauce you have to check this out the people need to hear from you i have not checked out his first video yet um i've seen clips i know a good majority of the allegations i just haven't seen the video i typically like to stay away from youtube drama and just kind of let it like get solved like is it true is it not true but you guys have said hot sauce this second video you have to check it out you have to react to it because mr beast it's not looking good for him so uh yeah without further ado we're gonna check this out uh show dog pack 404 some love by subscribing to his channel and chat we're trying to get to a quarter million subs so if you haven't yet please smash that subscribe button and join the sauce gang family uh, but enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo! Oh, all right, chat. Uh, so I just want to start off by saying you guys know, obviously, I am a massive Mr. Beast fan. Uh, but I'm going into this with an unbiased opinion. I'm going to try to. I'm going to hear what's being presented. I just, uh, people try and cancel people all the time. Mr. Beast has been, they've tried to cancel him. So I I, I need proof. I, I, I need some facts, some proof showing wrongdoing. Um, but again, I'm coming in this with an open mind. So. All right, jokes for food. I, I wish a philanthropist YouTuber would just give me 10K and not film it. Hey, hey. The hell happened to you? This is the dog. Mr. Beast, dude. that's what happened to me. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I was gonna beat somebody. Oh, I was gonna beat the. Uh, Kyle took my job. Kyle took that, my job. Uh, uh, that that used, used to be on uh, some older Mr. Beast videos. Ah, oh, Jake Weddle. Okay. Okay. I gotta feel I'm gonna hate this video, dude. Again, I I don't like drama. I like to believe in the good in people. And Mr. Beast stands for so much good stuff, man. And I just, uh, I really hope, I just hope this stuff isn't true, man. So just before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee, Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting it, I got hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof. I don't want to believe his videos are you know, fake, just man. Showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know fake videos or unsafe practices, uh, you know toxic workplace stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because for one, like most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand, I, and also like I think most of that stuff's just been covered with with you know, the news coming out about Beast Games and everything. Uh, and also I have like more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret Kendrick CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three, so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of- Chat, this is like, so again, right now, all these are allegations, right? Um, but I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, what's it called? the the documentary that came out of essentially taking down Nickelodeon, right? Just all the crazy, insane, terrible, evil stuff that happened there. Like, I just, I hope this stuff is not true, man. Messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious. And that's the thing, chat. Like, I, I, I don't, I, I like believing in the good. Like, I don't want this stuff to be true because Mr. Beast, if he is a good person, can help a lot of people. Beast Philanthropy can help. Like, he does a lot of good and it's entertaining. Like, 
I don't want someone like that to be bad. You know what I mean? I like, there's not a lot of good things left in this world. There's not a lot of good people. So, so I just want to put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that, you know, if you have a story, you can DM me, just uh, make sure you send. Yeah, it's uh, almost midnight here. I was literally about to go to bed and uh, I and checked like, my messages and you guys and had around, just blown like, this up. I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously if it goes to court, I don't, I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents. I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> that seems really dark. Though. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. Okay? I'm, I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the right. thing is, is she's not going to say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so that will be part three. So, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. Uh, he also knows about another um, portable document format who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also like final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, 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 you know, it builds up over time, but I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. <laughs> I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people yeah, who, uh, bro. You know me from Mr. I do Beast. remember I, him I from cut, older I mean, Mr. Beast videos. videos uh, uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept in the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor. A lot oh, of the that's time. the, uh, the I, I hide and go seek. A lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 a, to 2020, 2021. Farm or something? Back and did some that's a good I was video. there when they were authentic, and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from, it went from YouTuber guy with a camera to... Uh, Amazon. The culture around there was very unspoken, but there was a vibe. There was half the people who, if you made Jimmy happy, you were on the good half. And these people got random bonuses and uh, were usually moved up, had more screen time. Uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement or butt heads with Jimmy or just he didn't like you, you know, you were the other half. And uh, I consistently was in the half that Jimmy didn't. Jimmy didn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to <laughs> like it, get I hate so much. more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled did, was uh, for quite some time. They weren't allowed so to do their own stuff, right? their own content? And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind obviously so i used to talk to people i used to glaze jimmy publicly for things i do genuinely think are true uh but then it's like well how come you didn't talk about the working conditions well i wanted a career i didn't want to you know speak ill of youtube's golden boy and then i'm blacklisted forever i i, I tell people i was talking to you and they go don't what are you doing you're gonna kill your career it's like i have to or i'll be sad uh if this is the moment we're gonna talk about it so uh as far as that uh that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about xyz sooner but now you know what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is uh, admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there and we were working on a video, uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title. I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddle and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so that was I've the never one seen that video. time I had to, huh, my car, what? 
And on the fly, I saw him, because uh, Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea. But uh, So Marcus is calling his mom, and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh, no, they're going to call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I am text my mom, I go, I go, Mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. <laughs> Be surprised, mama. And then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her. And Good thing oh, I got that message off. the Oscar. Oh my God, on the fly. She goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. I do remember I him, bro. A meteor hit it. Jesus, I'm on vacation. Do you understand? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video and they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car and they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the taxes on, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working on a TV show in the 90s, on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. Mm -hmm. But now I make dog shit pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for, not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what the Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube and I didn't even bring up residuals because, oh my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, howdy, I could retire. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't well, like about man. the way some of the beast stuff it's shook out. It's tough, too, like, at a job, um, bringing up other people's money, and just, it, you know, just in general, I don't know if you guys have ever asked for a raise. It's, it's tough. It's nerve-wracking. You know, you got to bring in good points. Um was I feel, I feel really guilty about the way it just like shook out um yeah i was talking to this other writer like it's, it's fucked up you know that that's how the pay is and i want you to get paid more you know because you deserve to get paid more you know i don't have a kid um and he didn't want to rock the boat he, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat he's just I, know, I like my job. I like Lee Hill because when you when you, oh, you shit, did he get the dude fired too? He did, but I know I did. You know, you get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, "Hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like if that's like uh, you know, I trust you." And he, he stood with me. He went to that writers. He went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, "I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here." And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if oh, I knew... Oh, shit. If I knew he was going to lose his job, too, I wouldn't have done it. Damn, bro. That's cold, dude. That's cold, chat. That's cold. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the... With the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day, you know? And I get to go, go home and you get, you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? That sucks. That sucks, man. And I really, regr I really regret that. But, you know, me and him, we're really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Fair enough. Yeah. So maybe he was feeling better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's a very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is laser focused on one goal. Um, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. 
And I think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated because he's very good with numbers. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I now, I, I, I will s say this, chat. Here's something that like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If you're donating to charity, you're still donating to charity. You're still helping people. And if you make content on it, you're educating people on it. So as long as the beast philanthropy stuff is real, I don't care what his reason, even if he's trying to become more famous on it, it doesn't matter. The most famous philanthropist is still helping people. It's still changing people's lives. You know what I mean? So that whole thing where people try and cancel Jimmy for, you know, the philanthropy channel, like stop it, dude. He's still helping people. Now, if that content's fake, that's disgusting. Completely different story. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought, if you're gonna do something nice for somebody and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, that you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You, there was a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image and you gave one guy ten thousand dollars who needed it to eat and now the revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave i think when he's generous on camera he's it's the still least gave thing in the world there, there there's an element of you know oh hey you're crying that's so good for camera you know i'm so glad he's if you're crying because you're so thankful that you got xyz and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and, oh, can you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could, oh, it just, it, it made me uncomfortable that I was working there and I didn't like it and I vocalized it sometimes. And I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana, you know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know, and then that never happened. And I remember talking about that, like, hey, I thought my contract said XYZ. Uh, and then I got the severance checks. So, you know, whatever, all that regard. So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right, so so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that, that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public, let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I, I, was, I was hoping they'd call back, you know? And uh, I, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was uh, 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 three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a with a rate, and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in. I got I got paid a lot for it, but it didn't uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it didn't it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There there was a video. Um, I want to hear about this. That came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was it was the uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like uh, $10,000 every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was, just, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And if people don't know, that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. And it, uh, it didn't go well. I was already I was already planning on uh, moving to New York, and I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast, and I had a little bit of change in my pocket. You know, the most change I had in my pocket ever. You know, small potatoes, you know, compared to Beast bullshit. But you know, I thought I had enough to to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, "Hey, they want you for a video." I was like, "Oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God." Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what was the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch. And they, they, they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement. Uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30. We have like a video. They're pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's going to be like a luxury vacation. You're going to have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine. And like part of the video is going to be you deciding like what, what, what items am I going to get rid of, you know, today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get 
$300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, burr, 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 excuse me. Right? I would have done the I'll same thing. For you. If you How much? Kind of money in my face, <laughs> what? Sure. They were like, you're going to be locked in this room and we got to make sure you're on all the time. We're going to have cameras on you all the time. And you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, a lot I'll, of I'll money, dude. That's like, life okay, changing money. This. And, and I was, they always, they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. That I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Uh, and uh, I get there and at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good on the visual. It, it looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, it was in one of the studios. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for you know septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like things look were cool and funny on paper, but when you think about stuff, a hot tub that's not connected to a filtration system, give it three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which I was a silly complaint. But the shower was always cold, and you, you're taking like a quick shower. And, and I had cameras 24 seven on me and the ice cream machine. Let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two mugs on and off reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew. Like, so I got oh, to choose I bet. which I bet. sense was And you know, it would never work like McDonald's ice cream. Didn't have all of them good. Uh, so the, the little thing started to build up, you know, there was like a, a the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know, and you're, you're, you're playing it up like, cause you know, it's a video. And it got to a point where like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what, me sleeping or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a like, oh, you're gonna get X, Y, Z hours of sunlight. Oh, great. Well, I don't know how they figured that one out. I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep, and I, I have insomnia problems now, um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we gotta stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> oh, oh good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking. Now, what I'm, I'm curious about, though, is like, so again, they, uh, there's stuff that can be taken out of context, chat. And again, I just, I'm not saying I'm siding with Mr. Beast here. I'm just saying, I, I'm guessing he signed some form of a, of a contract to do this video, right? Um, you know, a waiver uh, of liability and stuff like that, right? Um, and I'm guessing that's something in there. You know, we might keep the, the lights on, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. Um, so, and I'm sorry, he, more more is probably still going to come out on the, he's probably still talking about this. I just, I wanted to kind of cut that off and, and say like, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going at this unbiased, but this part right here, like he, he did sign up for this. Like he did sign up for just like I was in the Navy. I was on submarines. Submarines sucked. Uh, I went over two months without seeing the sun. I, I, I get this. I understand now it was different, uh, but it, he signed up for it. Like this part, uh, 
and again, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure, again, depending upon what he signed, uh, waivers and, you know, what he's allowed, allows them to do, then it's not torture. There's a difference, right? Um, so this part, I, I, I think this is kind of a, a mood point. But again, I, I don't know. He's, I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth because I, I don't think he's done talking about it and maybe something really bad happens. I don't know. I don't know. But the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin, you know, it's not helping, you know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director from Jimmy uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? To pretend to make it genuine? I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You'll be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. You so, so Chad, here's, here's what I struggle with again here. It, that's like being mad at people that produce Survivor, the series, you know what I mean? Any game show, like any game show that's not like, you know, a vacation or, you know, dating game show, whatever, like, but you did sign up for it. And that's not, that's not uh, anything against Jimmy. You know what I mean? And again, I, I, I hate to, uh, cause I know there's a lot of this video left and more stuff's going to come out. I just, I, I, I'm just giving you guys my, my honest opinion and I, I'm, I'm agreeing with stuff and I'm disagreeing with stuff. Cause that's what, that's what we do. Um, and if, if you, you hate on me for that, then that's what it is. But I'm just, I'm just calling out this part right here, you know, that I just, I, I feel like you can't hate on that. Like that's what you signed up for. You know what I mean? Just like if you were to sign up for survivor and they don't give you food, you have to find your food. You have to start fire. You have to live out in tropical depressions and, and, and hurricanes not hurricanes they they evac the islands for that but you know what i mean like there's it is literally what you're signing up for so you know does it suck yes it drastically sucks but it's what you signed up for. something about like having the cameras on me all the time like i was i was i was not having a good time but we were filming a video so I was trying my best to be funny, you know? I'm, I got, I, I'm a dark comic, you know? I, I, got, I got bits about, I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have, I, my, my, my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor, you know? So this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because, you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type line about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse, but we're filming. So I'm doing bits. Yeah, dude, this doesn't I'm sound like it, it ended well. And I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days. I'm not doing so hot, you know, which if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera. But it, it, was, it was too real. If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off, of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse to it for 10 seconds? And I think what he's talking about there, uh, again, I haven't seen the first video, but uh, you guys have wrote me a lot of messages. Um, and I know Jimmy's being accused of faking the, uh, uh, the Stranded Out to Sea one, which is literally one of my favorite Mr. Beast videos. And that's the stuff, man. Like, if that stuff's faked, like, God, that really, really pisses me off, man. 
But again, we need proof. And that's the thing with cancel culture chat. Like, like, I'm sorry. It's just, it's so easy to jump on something that's negative and to cancel somebody without proof, without the proof is in the pudding. We can't, you know, we, we just, we can't just go off someone's word. That's why in law you're innocent until proven guilty. And that's why I hate, that's why I'm not even, I don't like doing these videos because I don't, I hate, I hate drama. I hate YouTube drama. I hate people getting canceled because usually over 50% of the time, um, it, it, it's just someone trying to get a bag. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying that's what's happening here. It's just why I'm saying why I typically stay away from this. Um, yeah, this is tough. Dude. Did you uh, try like, to I feel out? bad for the guy. Yes. Though. I started to calculate. Um, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. That line though, Since dude. we're doing time lapse shots and since they insisted some... on time lapse shots, I said, "All right, we'll give you time lapse shots bet." We fake videos. Why can't my... we fake this one? <laughs> you too. Uh, on, on with the whiteboard they gave me, and I was like, "All right, yeah, scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage." You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh no, either that goes in or this footage is unusable. And then you know, James Warren came in and erased it. You know, fucking, you know, don't, don't put that. Don't, don't. Hey, we can torture him. Don't you dare let him get a plug in there. You know, uh, so. Uh, like we were playing up the joke, you know, it's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever. Like I'll play into a joke, whatever. It's fine. It's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes. I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes from my dad. I'll joke about my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit. Hey, my dad. Uh, I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine. Cause I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy jokes with my dad. And I sometimes see weird. I don't like it. Yeah, we were doing that one of those hide and seek videos again. You know, at the time they were a lot realer, uh, so I got caught. And when you get caught, you know, you go to the you go to you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if you know. I, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he he says to me, uh, "All right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad." And like, it's a that, joke. That is kind of. But when my my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. Massive He's difference, for sure. 100% a massive difference. And that difference. wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me. Said, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, why? You're clearly unwell. Uh, dude, uh, this is not going to go well, chat. Because well, the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm sitting like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in a year. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in and he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today. you know. And this one's for the challenge. And I go, that's the challenge today. He goes, you're going to you're gonna run a marathon. You're going to do the two... 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill. 26.2 miles. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm not I'm, I'm dyslexic. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't have to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge, Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I was like, oh, camera. I don't, I don't want to do that. You go, just do it for the thing. My kid, you know. Like, the, the, there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know. I, 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 so something I, I 100% will will say, dude, this is so condescending, though. Like, I do see this element of, you know, he's like being looked down on and, you know, oh, you're just going to do what we say to do. Like, 
that does i mean that'll that'll break you over time especially if you're in a situation like this and you know you're essentially locked up and the feeling of being watched like it's creepy you know so i can see him yeah dude, this is not gonna go legally i couldn't say no to the to treadmill thing yeah so i i, I people who run marathons train forever and it's still hard I'm training for a half marathon right. right now. It sucks. Why don't I run? I don't run, you know, let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it. Just do the thing, you know? Right. You know? Content, you know? Yeah. And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, the last the whole video, I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I started running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I, I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. I got off the treadmill. Ah, oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just the, the lactic acid. I, I. God, this sucks. Okay, so let me let, let me add a, a little more context, chat, because again, so I. When I said this is what he signed up for, it, it is. I, I will definitely acknowledge and empathize with. There's a lot of stuff, I think, if it was just some random person, you know what I mean? Like, he... I, I'm guessing he felt bullied into a lot of this stuff, right? And I will definitely empathize with that. Um, if it was just some random person, they would have felt like they could say no. They wouldn't have felt like they were letting him down because they didn't work together. He, you know, he probably felt like he was... You know, if he would have said no, he would have felt like he was you know, r potentially ruining that relationship to do other stuff, to make future money, you know, be blackballed on YouTube and stuff. So I, I will definitely empathize like, yes, you know, me saying, you know, this is what you signed up for, but he, he didn't sign up to be treated like crap. You know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, I will definitely empathize with that. I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I mean, that's when I'm yeah, uh, get the psych in and talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying, you got to pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They go, uh, Oh, Jake, well, I love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like, at least seven more days? Jesus Christ. I, no. What? No. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, you know, everything was fine. So I just, you know. Slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it. Uh... <laughs> they brought in all the people I liked and Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Yeah. But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair, turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me, and he was like Lex Luthor over there. He turns around, he stands up. Oh, he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video, and he's um, he's like, oh, stop, you're going to make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not, he's just... I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, uh, you know, as, as if rehearsed by his lawyers, uh, yeah, you know, 
your mental health is the most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is. I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. The S, he just, he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300 keg, but I got, he goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges, so you got, you know, 100,000 some change, you know, give or take. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, uh, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes alone. <laughs> and now I spent all that money on doing stand up. I just, I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. You know, my family back home, I gave them a bunch of stuff that they needed. And I uh, haven't been back on uh, a beast set in any official capacity or unofficial capacity uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else and they worked out the kinks. And then uh, I'd still gotten some hot water and I knew it would. And I've wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And I feel good though. That's how you get that out there. Good. So I just want to hop in and show some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after you got out of uh, solitary. How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned but we are working on things. Jeez, Minor, this is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey, Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good, and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy, and my therapist is concerned. Haha, <laughs> but my legs and joints feel better, like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters, and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I won up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face. But hey, I'm out. I'm alive. Therapist who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so fucked and honestly, fuck them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery. And please feel free to reach out if you yep. need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money, so good. I appreciate, I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kinda in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon Jeez. included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking, too much one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kinda shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 days. They paid me what I made up to that point. Like even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. And like, I'm not famous enough to burn a bridge. So at the end of the day, I'm still Jimmy's bitch. Like if I was Carl and he did that to me, I'd ruin him. And they wanna do it again. That could be your leverage. If the guy breaks down also, two is better than one. Yeah, right. I told them everything they did to me that they can't do again in order to make sure the other person doesn't break down as fast. But like the way the video is meant to function is the problem. It's a bad idea, full stop. It sounds clickbaity, sounds right up Jimmy's alley, but it's morally yeah, I mean, unethical it's, like it's... on every level. Off camera breaks. Solitary confinement, yeah, it's not, not good. Take the marathon out. Marathon is a video in itself. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing, felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. It felt like of Jeff Bezos had a gimp. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp, part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so fake when he came in and said he cared about my mental health. They must have programmed the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to, s and I swear to our Lord and savior, he stopped himself from saying Sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I wanna show this segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called, no does not mean no. 
already insane uh, because it's sort of, what? it seems to be co-opting the popular anti rape slogan, um, which is a terrible look given the allegations that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads, when dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of, and you can call the local Dollar Tree, and the person that answers says, no, you can't film here, that literally doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees and see if they are fans or if any have kids that are fans. Try talking to their boss, their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter and try their social team. If all avenues are exhausted and you are left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Basically what I'm trying to convey is what we call pushing through no. Don't stop because one person told you no. So I, I'll say here too, Chet, like definitely don't put this in any shape or form with the R word, right? Uh, so this, I have been in sales. This is essentially a sales thing. Um, it's uh, overcoming objections, right? So when you're told no, like, hey, would you like to buy X product? No. Okay, like, you know, can you explain that more? Is there a reason behind it? So it's talking about pushing through the nose, trying to get to the root cause of the objection so you can overcome it. Um, but yeah, don't, you can't associate, associate this with, Definitely, they should have rewarded that because, yeah, no definitely does mean no. Um, Stop when all talking about like options closing. are exhausted. This is one of many tools that, when combined, dramatically improve your probability of success when producing here. So, so yeah, this idea of like pushing through no's is a big component to, to working at Mr. Beast. Um, and, and, and the way that it manifests itself a lot of the time is like a director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but you know, I have animals, you can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotechnics, and you gotta clean everything up. So the producer's sort of incentivized to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things changed last second. So they're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're put in positions where it's like, oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job. Like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? I'll show you a real life example. This is unused evidence from um, part one. I had seen this Reddit post, uh, titled Mr. Beast Leaving Trash Behind and Debris at Film Site in Aden, North Carolina. Apparently he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site in the bottom of the pond weeks and weeks after the agreed time frame. This actually rendered it unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camp's opening date multiple times due to not oh, being wow. able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht, Keep It. Uh, where at the end of that video, he actually says, and If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T series. Yes, yeah, so he says at the end of the video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually on site um, for part of this production, I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors, I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. And the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew and because grace or forgiveness has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say but they sort of give by a lot on their, their good public image. And, and like, I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee like, if you went to the, the lake at the camp and you, and you went magnet fishing, like you, you'd find all sorts of debris that's still there to this day. Like they, they didn't clean it that up. That really sucks, So in yeah. the case of Jake Weddle, like I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Jake gets out early, we don't have a video and your job is at risk. Send him, so incentivize them to keep going pressure and not on top quit. Of, like, him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, to just manipulate him to, into staying. Which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he yeah, see, couldn't have left saying. at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just 
you know, walked out. Because of the implication. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe, yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Uh, Cause I, you know, had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone, you know, fixates on a thing, you know, I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior. If you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And he didn't care who got hurt. And I think Jimmy surrounded himself with really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. And they, it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen. And they do. And so I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my fucking job. I'll buy in the hole. I don't care. I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But uh, just, let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was, uh, this, this was like a swim coach uh, in your neighborhood. Someday, and everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Behind closed doors, is a real piece of shit. And so when stuff starts hitting the fan, what? Him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, when I saw my dad in the news, I said, oh, you idiots. Like, I was like, no, I was, oh, dumb, dumbass, God damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised and it was just a consequence that's happened to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time and I don't know everybody really loves Jimmy and behind closed doors he is not super great and that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally and it's branding it's marketing it's you too. Okay, so I guess yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson drama, and um, you know that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast, uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just, you know, being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of, talking to reporters sweetly like I have been was when I saw the Discord stuff for the, I never, because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like handled for lack of a better term. And then they, and then they started bringing more people on, you know, maybe they thought they had that under the rug, you know, but all right, we handled that. Now let's bring in some writers, you know? Um, so here's they, something to chat. So there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff I don't know, like with, the whole Ava Tyson situation. Like I know what she's being accused of or not even accused. I know there's proof, right? That she was inappropriately talking with minors. Um, 
but I don't know the extent of anything in regards to like, did Jimmy know? Was it being covered up? Um, was it being allowed? Like that stuff, I don't know. So maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe we need to watch more of these videos, chat. So I know there's a bunch on the 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 Ava Tyson situation, and I I need to see this first video. Um, so maybe that'll come out in the next couple days. I mean that's out, but I, us reacting to it. So and when I saw it, all that stuff start coming out, and the potentiality as of this moment of recording. You know, I know this has been happening fast, and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats, or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me, and if you're gonna make fun of my dad, I don't care what happens to me or my career or reputation after this, I had to, I had to say some stuff. So whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct to the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. And like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around and whenever he, he, he is, He's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender? With a physical mask? Like, do I have to... Is, how, is it more on the nose? Or... <laughs> I, I don't know why they let him go because there's, there's rumors back and forth. You know, so I don't know why they let him go, but he didn't leave at one point. Even if... That guy didn't do anything. They still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do, you, why do you call him Delaware? And I, didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. Jesus. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy knew about it? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record. Uh, off the registry, and that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Delaware was, there was a house there, like, we, 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 we,
Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reed's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but, you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with, so I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like, what you're not doing background checks. You're not. Everyone at your company knows. And why would he be wearing a mask? Know. Like, um, obviously. Like, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying, "I didn't know." Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you, or, or you know, your your lawyers and and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and. Um, on how you could have not known that there was an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you're responding to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out, Jake Weddle, top link in the description. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. Bro, um... Yeah, man, I, uh, so, hey, the, the whole manager of the Delaware thing, dude. Yeah, there's, there's just no way Jimmy didn't know about that. I mean, like, obviously he was wearing a mask for a reason. You know what I mean? Like to cover up his face so he couldn't be recognized. Couldn't be looked up. Um, yeah, I don't know. So Chad, I think what I need to do, uh, we definitely need to do some more research. Especially because I've just, I've reacted to Jimmy for so long, like... I can't just blanket keep reacting to him and not try and find out what's going on. Uh, because yeah, if, if some of these allegations are true, like, we can't continue to react to him. Um... Which sucks, man! Like, I, I don't want this stuff to be true. I don't want... I think he could do a lot of good, you know what I mean? Especially with beast philanthropy, educating people, I mean, entertaining people. Um, but yeah, if he's faking videos, rigging stuff up, covering up the Chris Tyson stuff, employing that dude, yeah, that, that can't, that cannot be allowed. Um, and I feel bad, uh, I feel really bad for, um, uh, Jake. Like I said, I kind of, I kind of walked back my statement in regards to this is what you signed up for. I mean, it is what he signed up for, but I, I can definitely empathize with the fact that he was, he felt pressured into doing stuff, um, and that he just couldn't quit. Cause you know, ah, the budget's shot, you know, ah, we just wasted millions of dollars. Like. So I get that, um, and I feel bad for him. And you could tell, I mean, those are those are real tears. He's been trying to get this off of his chest. You know, he's probably gonna be sued now. I don't know. This is, this is getting messy, chat. 
I'm very interested. Well, hey, like I said, we gotta re we gotta check out and react um, to the first video and then this third video. Yeah. So um, so chat. What I need from you guys, let me know. Again, we're. I just I don't think this is something that I cannot not cover, not look into. Um, so let me know in, in the comments, some videos, you know, whether it's on the, you know, Ava Tyson, you know, Mr. Beast crew, stuff like that. Let me know, um, what's some stuff I should check out. And I don't, I don't, I would prefer to stick to stuff that has facts chat. You know what I mean? Like stuff that has actual facts, concrete proof. Um, cause again, I just, I hate the stuff that's just allegations because you never know like but yeah man this uh this is not looking good for jimmy um yeah so let me know chat let me know what you guys think and um yeah i just i couldn't not especially after all your guys comments i mean you're like you have to check this out now so let me know what you guys think. Uh, we're going to be checking out some more of this stuff. And uh, I just feel weird asking for some, for you guys to subscribe on this. But if you enjoy it, smash the subscribe button, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll cover more of this stuff. So I, I think it's my duty. I think I need to. And for my own sanity. Again, I've looked up to Jimmy for a while. And if this stuff's true, like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, almost 1 a.m. I'm going to get this out and uh, get my, my booty to bed. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. I don't even, I'm just so thrown off right now. I don't know how to end this. Peace out, guys. Woo!